zkouška. One, two. It's working. Hello, welcome our next speakers, Petr Hráček, Michal Ruprich and Josef Řídky. They will be talking about remote dependency solving. Hi folks, I'm glad that you attend this presentation. I see many of the RPM specific guys like Florian Festi, Petr Pisař. Well, let's start. We, are to, we will talk about the project Remote Dependency Solving. Sorry, I have to walk. I'm, I feel better. Well, what is the agenda? First of all, we will introduce the project itself. We will talk about the project deeply. And afterwards, my colleagues, Josef Řídky and Michal Ruprich, will talk about the deep implementation, like client, server, uh, and whatever we want. Uh, the colleagues are pretty nervous about the questions. Please ask at the end. No, seriously. You can ask whenever you want. Well, I would like to speak about who was initiator of this project. The initiator of this project was Jan Zeleny. And he left the, uh, this uh, presentation two minutes ago. Well. The project itself is a part of Red Hat Lab QE. It means that there are several projects. Nowadays, uh, on the project works three students. Michal uh, Ruprich, Josef Řídky, and Shimon Matej. Shimon Matej, I guess it's not here. Well, what does the project aim for? Let's imagine that you have uh, low-cost devices, like smartphone. Who knows what does it mean, smartphone? <laughs> yeah, cool, at least two people. Uh, and you install the Fedora. As I said, let's imagine. And you would like to install the package. What, does, uh, what do you want? Yeah. You want to install. You need to install. Uh, uh, you want to find the dependencies and install the packages. Sometimes, sometimes, 99%, the memory is completely consumed and the dependency fails. Well, and the device completely does not install anything. Well, and this is the aim for the server-side dependency solving project. Basically, it sends the data to server, server solves the dependencies, returns the answer to client, and client install without any crash. That's awesome. And this is the turn for Josef. So Peter, thank you for your introduction. Hi, I'm Josef, and I will tell you something about the project, and uh, I will uh, tell something about the client application. So. Project contains two console application. One is for client, one is for server. Client and server communicates through network using request-response uh, communication model. 
Uh, nowadays, we don't have servers situated somewhere in federal infrastructure, so the project can run only on a local host. Something about the client. Uh, if you want to mm, use it, <laughs> uh, you, you should know this. Uh, client sending only request to server. Uh, for sending request, we are using JSON uh, structure in uh, communication. Uh, client uh, does not solve any dependencies, and this is the most important thing uh, on this project. Client is here just for the download, install, update, or erase packages. For downloading, we are using a librepo library. For installing, updating, and erasing, uh, we are using RPM lib library. So, how do clients work? In the terminal, uh, you will type some command like you can see on the top of this slide. RDS dash client double dash type of operation that you select. You can choose install, update, or erase. And the list of packages that you want to install or do with uh, the packages, the requested operation. Uh, what client do? Client will uh, parse uh, repo files. From repo files, uh, we are uh, getting just uh, the URL address. Uh, and we add to this information uh, type of operation and list of packages that you uh, typed in a command. All of these informations are sent to server. Uh, to server, we are as well sending two more uh, files. First is system solve, and the second is yamconf. Both of these files are important for the dependency solving. When the server has all of this information, uh, uh, the server will solve dependency and return uh, in an answer the result of the dependency to client. The answer can contain three types of information. First is a list of uh, packages that we will install and which, with which we will uh, do the requested operation, so install, update, erase. Second type of information are, uh, is error message. This means dependency error, that dependency cannot be solved from some reason. And the third type of information is that it's nothing to do. That means that all the requested package that you type are already installed, so nothing to do. Second part of the project uh, contains uh, the second console application. It's a server. And uh, Michal will tell you something more about it. Okay, <clears throat> test, does it work? Okay, uh, my name is Michael, and I would like to tell you something about the server side operation. So as was already said, uh, the server only does dependencies, nothing else. It does not install anything, it only solves the dependencies. For solving, we are using Hockey library, and for downloading some metadata about repositories, we are using the librepo library. So if we initiate the server, as, uh, as Josef has already said, we need some information from the client. So uh, we need three types of information. We need the links to all the repositories that the client uses. We need the system solve file, which is basically a collection of all the packages that the client uses. And we need, of course, the information about the requested packages. Uh, so the server uses the librepo library, library to download the metadata about the repositories. Uh, then it creates a sec object, which is basically, uh, uh, again, it's a huge collection of packages. We fill the, the, the object with all the packages that are available in the repositories and all the packages that are available on the client. And with the information about the requested packages, we solve the dependencies. The result is uh, some answer that is sent to the client. So now we would like to show you a short demo. Uh -huh. So first, there will be the install operation. So first of all, we check if some package is installed on the system. For example, Emacs, it's not. So we initiate the server. And from the client side, we try to communicate with the server, with the server and try to install the package Emacs. Uh, 
Okay? So we can see that there is some communication going on between the two uh, applications and the server is counting the dependencies. Uh, here there is an example of the JSON structure that we are using as a communication tool. Uh, we can see there is some uh, state code uh, very similar to, for example, HTML, uh, just to uh, indicate what is going on on the server side, on the client side, and so on. And the answer from the server is basically the Emacs package, uh, the link to, to the repository, and the location on the repository. On the client side, again, we can see that there is only one package that will be installed. And, of course, there is this... Um, a prompt for the, the install operation. So we initiate the prompt. Okay, we want to install the package. You can see that it has downloaded successfully and the package is installed. Now if we check with RPM that the uh, package is installed in the system, it is already there. Okay, uh, so next there is, a, there is an erase operation. So again we check if the, the package is installed. Yes, it's in the system. So we initiate the server, and again, we uh, try to communicate from the client side with the server, and we request that the package Emacs is erased. So we initiate the erase operation with the Emacs package. Again, the dependencies might take some time, of course. And the answer should be, again, just one package from, uh, that should be erased. Here we can see that the MetaLink is actually a system file, which means that, uh, which indicates that the package was already installed on the system, because the system file is, is the sole file that I, was, uh, that I mentioned before. So again, uh, for Emacs, we need to erase only one package, so if we initiate the erase, we press yes, the package will be removed, and now we can check that uh, the package really doesn't uh, appear in the system. And there is a third demo. Uh, we would like to show you that uh, we are actually able to update the whole system. So we simply, uh, we don't specify, specify any packages. We simply uh, initiate the update command. Uh, again, the dependencies take some time. And the answer is a huge uh, list of packages, because I actually haven't done the update for some time for purposes of this confer uh, conference. So you can see that there are like 560 packages that should be installed or updated. Uh, yes, there is the, some should be installed, some should be updated, and two should be erased. Now, of course, uh, now in the prompt, uh, I will only press, press no because I really don't want to install anything. So never mind. So this is, uh, this is the, a short demo that should demonstrate how, how the program works. Now, uh, to sum it up, so the client provides some information about its system, the server solves all the dependencies, and, uh, and the answer or the request is uh, sent in the JSON uh, format. So maybe uh, you notice that uh, it actually doesn't do anything new apart from DNF, but this is just uh, the, uh, the uh, current state of the application. There are some future plans that we are aiming for. Of course, we need to secure the communication because the client is revealing a lot of information about itself. The, the security is prepared. It's just that we still don't have any, any server or anything. So we, uh, the, the, the security part is actually turned off in the application right now because it only runs on localhost. Uh, we are hoping that in a few months uh, we will be a part of uh, Fedora. So it will be a package on Fedora and you will be able to download it and install it and use it. Uh, of course, we are hoping that we will be able to, to try this application on a real server as some kind of a, a daemon and uh, anyone should be able to use it just with the client side application. And then there are two main points that we are aiming for. Uh, there is the client database and the caching of solving problems or operations. So for the client database, uh, if we initiate the client for the first time, we need to send a whole lot of information. Uh, the biggest problem is the solve file because it could be really huge. 
Um, we would like to create a database of clients, and if there is a client who already tried to connect to a server, and the sole file is on the server already, uh, the client doesn't need to send it. So we are aiming for decreasing the amount of uh, information that should be sent through the network uh, so that there is as little as possible. The second point is caching solving operations. Uh, we would like to, um, let's imagine a question where uh, a client uh, requests, for example, the, the, from the demo, uh, requests uh, install, installment of, of Emacs package. Uh, then there is a second client who has uh, the, same, uh, the same collection of packages installed on the, on, the, on, the, on the system. So it is basically the same copy of the Fedora uh, system right now, and it requests the same, uh, same package. So there is basically no need to repeat the dependency, the dependency solving operation. We can simply just use the answer that is cached from the previous operation and just send it to the client. So these are the two main points that this application should, uh, should aim for. Well, and at the end, I would like to speak about other future plans. Uh, nowadays, the rebate um, server-side dependency solving is not a part of Fedora infrastructure, of course, because the project, on the project works free students, and they do a really great work. And we would like to introduce the project to the Fedora infrastructure soon. Uh, who of you knows Red Hat Satellite? Great. Let's imagine that you have a farm which counts, I don't know, 10,000 computers. You will update the first one, and the rest of the computers are only installing, like Mike mentioned, caching solving. It saves time. And of course, the project can be solved in uh, Fedora workstations. Why not? This is not only for the low-cost devices. And this is the conference. This conference, conference is about the bingo word, you know it, Docker. And let's say that you have the one Docker file and you would like to install it. Some package, like, I don't know who I can send a pedal, yeah. And you will install the first Docker image via our software. The second Docker image would like to install the same. And it was already installed, no dependencies are needed, and it is installed immediately. And the rest of the futures which comes from my memory can be introduced later on. Well, where you can find the project? On the GitHub. Oh, typo. Uh, this is not the reference I can show you. Who are contact of the, uh, this project? My free students and me. And blogs and articles about the project will come in soon as on the Fedora and as for the, on the developer Red Hat. Well, I guess that that's all. It's a pretty short presentation. Yeah. You did not run? Why? <laughs> well, please, questions. <laughs> From the list. So the basic question, you mentioned that the salt file can be quite big and you don't want to translate it over network. So my question is, what does this file contain? Because I just tried running rpm-qa through, through GZ and it's like 32 kilobytes. Um, okay, thank you for the question. Um, well, the file is basically, as I said, a collection of all the packages installed on the system, on the client, okay? And it's some kind of a binary, bi binary file. And for example, I don't know, uh, I don't know maybe, maybe that you, you have some new copy of Fedora, something like that, because for example, my sole file is like four megabytes big. And there, there might be, there might be so far that might be like, like 100 megabytes, 400 megabytes big. That's why I'm asking what it contains. To be honest. All the server needs is the output of RPM-QA, which lists all the RPM packages installed. Uh, to be honest, I'm not really sure what it contains because it's a huge binary file that is actually created in <laughs> itself. Florian. <laughs> 
answer that. So it's basically the power of therapy and measures which are relevant for the abundance solving in a comp compressed binary open format. Yeah. So the thing is why that's needed. The problem is if you only have packages from your own repositories installed, you can get away with just sending the links or the, the hashes or the IDs of the packages. But as soon as you have third party um, yes. software installed, the server cannot know the details of the of those packages. And they are basically contained in this in the soft file. So the server can be sure he, he does know about all the other packages you have in the system. And, Thanks, and, and the soft files And from what I understand, the the soul file is actually uh, like a like a huge binary, uh, let's say let's say logical uh, equation. the The system is using it to to solve the dependencies. It actually uses the whole binary file to to solve this equation with the requested package. And if the answer is one, true, then the package can be installed. So. Mm -hmm. But of course, this can fail if you have packages which are not known in the repository. But yes. that's probably something I would try before all the other stuff. Yeah, thanks. And I'll Well, thanks. Sorry, guys. Another question? Yeah, I was wondering if uh, you've done work on figuring out or recommending to the client um, whether additional repos should be enabled to accomplish the client's wish. Uh -huh. That becomes more relevant, um, I'd say, in RHEL, uh, uh, where there is all these different repos that have different pieces of software. Good point. Yes. Thank you for the question. Um, Yes, we talked about it. It's not mentioned in the future, but we suggested it some time ago that, like you said, for example, if I request a package that is not present in any repository that I'm using as a client, and the server, of course, the server uh, has uh, a lot of clients, so it knows basically all, every possible repository there can be, because it knows a few repositories from this client, a few from this client, and so on. So, yes, in the future we would like to uh, store all these repositories somewhere else, for example, like like away from the from the client database, and if the client requests a package that is not uh, available through his own repositories, then the server will, as you said, uh, assume that that maybe he should um, tell the client to first allow this repository, and then try to request it again. Then it will be solved. That's it. Another question. I guess that this is the correct. This is the really good point because Michael solved it, let's say, one month ago. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> like let VI. Let me Vim. think. Uh, yes, uh, the, the search should be there. Actually, we were trying to do it before the conference, but we were like, we had exams and so on. We were out of time. Uh, but the the server should uh, somehow do the same operation as DNF does. So it should try to find the best uh, the best possible um, form of the request. Like, uh, I don't know if you request uh, right now. I don't have any example in my head. But yeah, of course, it should it should try to assume what the client wanted, if this answers your question, or if you mean like the the search operation that, for example, DNF allows. Uh, this is also it should be there, of course. Yes, be because the, because the whole because the whole application should uh, should uh, do the same stuff as DNF does, 
plus something that we mentioned uh, apart from DNF, and just just do it on the server side. That's it. Well, that's a, that's a very good idea. We actually haven't thought about it. Thank you. I think that it's... Yeah, this it can be, be used, implemented. Of yeah. course. Why not? You. <laughs> so, you said that you are also aiming for the embedded devices, so like small ones. Yeah. Uh, do you think about some snapshot feature inside it? Because, for example, with PM or DNF, I can use the WebFS plugin, uh, I think, that uh, before the update, uh, the tool does uh, and if something goes wrong, I can just go back to the snapshot. No, no. Nowadays, no, and we don't have a capacity for it. Really? It is a really <laughs> complicated, of course. Well, it's not. If you are using the correct file system, then it's just one call. <laughs> my, 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 uh, my answer for that is really simple. I am waiting for your pull request, <laughs> who will implement it. But uh, as Michael said, we do not want to include uh, introduce the new features basically first of all we would like to solve the problems like dnf install the methods and so on and the rest of the stuff we do not want to duplicate dnf i don't know if we will introduce the project as a plugin or as a standalone this is not nowadays in the time frame out we will see No, 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 no. <laughs> they don't want us. I don't know. <laughs> it's just that it's just that I think that we just haven't talked about it yet. It's just like the different around, so you should talk to them. So I have a remark. Can you please change the command line interface to be the same as DNF? Uh yes. Uh, yes, this is the, my proposal to colleagues to change it, of course. Yeah, it will be soon because... Sorry. Have you any numbers on how much uh, resources you are actually saving? Because the thing is, it's very clear you're saving downloading the, the metadata, which is a big thing. I get that. But running the RPM transaction typically is bigger than running the, the sorting. So I have doubts that you actually save resources on the device. Yeah. But I think avoiding that download is huge. If I have a lot yeah. of repositories enabled, the metadata download on a, on a VPN yeah, can be 10 minutes. I, I'm not arguing with you. Uh, sorry guys, uh, Florian, I uh, know uh, what are you talking about, but the basic idea was about the dependency solving. And um, it's complicated to answer. Uh, I might add something. I think that right now we don't have sufficient data to to measure this this top, like like to measure if if we actually saved some time or not. I'm, I'm no no because uh, because we are actually using it on our our own machines and and we don't have any embedded devices that we could use. We don't have a server that we could use. So yeah yeah I, I understand. Yes. Um, because uh, my guess is you, you will be have a hard time actually saving like CP, CPU or, or memory. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I did it some tests. Like you mentioned, uh, I, I I made an update the Fedora 23, I guess it was, after let's say one uh, a month, and on my workstation it took 10 minutes 20 minutes and i made a snapshot i tried to do a sol solving on the dependency side and it really saved five minutes time for me okay. yeah it saved the time but it is a proof of concept uh i heard that something like this is already uh, is being solved in red hat but I have to clarify it. 
So, uh, for clarification, so it took 10 minutes to solve the dependency? Yeah. On my Fedora Workstation 23, uh, two weeks ago, I tried to install or try to update the uh, system, and solving took 10 minutes. But with DNF? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I have, a, let's say, 10, 13 repositories and downloading metadata, updating, solving. It really took a time. So, so much time. Yeah. But, I don't know. Like, like, I'd like to offer a, a, another point of view, right? I've been using Debian for ages. <laughs> it never took that long. Like, like uh, just for... Yeah. Not Why not? Yeah. So, so, it's, it's, so uh, I, I don't think that it is something wrong to the DNF. Well, I'm not sure I would like if, to be. Like, it could be easily put like that, that the DNF does something wrong because it takes less time. But it's <laughs> I, I, I only can say, contact DNF, what is wrong? You, wh who, what yeah, is the pain? But if I may rephrase my, or a little put it into the question, isn't it better then like, to uh, work on optimizing uh, the dependency solving algorithm yeah. so that it Definitely doesn't take yes. that long. Yeah, well, yeah. The, the net solves pretty cheap. It's the, the metadata size. Like the, the size of the SQL like database is like large. There's a lot of repository metadata. I think the Debian uh, like counterpart just doesn't have as much content in the metadata store. So uh, yeah. Debian has different yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, guys, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay, sorry guys, another question. Sorry guys. My question would be, what is the benefit of using this instead of using something like OS3 and building the whole package set, like really installing the package set on the server and then downloading just the image or the snapshot of the image as Atomic Host does. What does this bring differently? Like if I commit a device, I probably want to install image, not install a single package. I want to sure that the operation of switching to new version is atomic and stuff like that. So um, um, what is the benefit? Uh, the, the benefit is only from uh, the project itself uh, is about the remote dependency solving and to teach students how to connect to the Red Hat network. We are not talking about what is the another project like OS3 and other. We would like to, I don't know if there are any differences, if there is any benefit or whatever. I, I could try to answer that if that's okay. Just yeah, no problem. You can install what you want here. Yeah, you can try to, I mean, if you have, if, 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 you, are, if you are in control of the OS3 server, then you can just build, instead of, mm -hmm. like you, you can send their package set, a request the image, and it will install yeah. for you the image yeah. on the server, which is basically the same operation. Yeah, but the, 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 the key difference, in my opinion, And, okay, and if I, if I may, if I may, uh, I'm not really sure, uh, but wouldn't the, wouldn't the, the image <coughs> be much larger than just the answer from the server? Like, like the, the client would need to download from the server the whole, the whole image. This is just few bytes of answer, and then you can download and install. You are installing the packages anyway. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, but... Then you would just download the, the update of the image, for example. Yeah. So okay. It's, it's the, the, the amount of data from my point of view is the same. Okay. Um, it's just that you are doing different things. But I was, I was interested in... We have five minutes left. <laughs> I would like to, f last question if you have. So, so maybe a small one. I, I think if I prepare an update of some package, I can specify that this update requires a remote population. Uh, do you count that in your? No, not really, not right now. Well, last question, please. Give me a moment, guys.
Ha. Uh, yeah, but I, I never, yeah, good point. Uh, I see that mm, um, we never talk about Libhiv. Like Richard Hughes introduced, this is the, some composition with Librepo, Hawkins and stuff. I had a discussion with uh, Richard Hughes mm, uh, two hours b b ago, and Libhiv, um, does not allow you to solve, to only install the packages. Yeah. And that's all, and we cannot use them. But we can provide the API. Yeah. yeah, why not? Because this is the project, and this is not the reason why we should not provide. I, am, I agree, we can. Yeah. Sure. Thank you, guys. And I would like to thank to my colleagues. Test.